AIS student at Western University. She has completed a BA in Communication Studies and Business Management at Wilfrid Laurier University. In her fourth year of university, Michelle volunteered as an academic mentor and enjoyed opening up the world of libraries to first year students and showing them that the library isn't such a scary place after all. She is currently on co-op at the Huron University College Library, where she divides her time between research, instruction, and archive support. After graduation, Michelle would like to pursue a career as an academic librarian, where she can enhance learners' success and make the student university experience a more engaging one. So welcome me in introducing Michelle. I'm not sure I'm here. Okay. So hello, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm happy to be here today to tell you about the Learning Commons project that I've been involved with at Huron University College Library. Um, Huron's a small liberal arts college that's affiliated with Western University. And Huron is currently in the process of transforming their physical space by planning for a learning commons. Um, to help guide planning, librarians at Huron have already done research um, surveying and observing students in order to get a feel for the learning preferences and the needs at the Huron community. Um, and last semester, focus groups were held with faculty and students in order to kind of probe into some of the um, questions that came up from the survey results. I got to attend these focus groups and today I want to tell you about some of the findings that came out of them. Okay, so the drive right now to redesign and rebuild university libraries sort of plays into the larger shift that's happening in higher education itself. Um, as a student, I've experienced myself the shift in um, sort of instructing method where you're focusing on lecturing to more of an engaged um, teaching style with um, a focus on active learning methods such as group discussions and um, sort of group learning and things like that. Um, and of course, so with the change in how undergraduates are learning and studying, space changes naturally need to follow. Now I'm sure you're all aware of the concept of a learning commons, um, but just to kind of quick describe it, I would say that they're focused on um, student growth and development and they provide integrated services like uh, writing services, um, study skills, um, IT help desks and that sort of thing all in one space. So the purpose of the focus groups um, was to discuss teaching and learning at Huron and to invite thinking of possibilities around some of the current space challenges as well as to invite um, some thinking ab about ways that we could challenge some of the assumptions about what that space should be um, in order to optimize student and faculty learning experiences. So after my involvement in the focus groups, I believe that collaborating with students is incredibly important not only for the insights that it provides, but also because it sends, it's a way to engage with the students and it sends the message that we care about their actual needs. Students in the focus group were happy to hear that their input might actually go into the build when it happens. Um, and this creates a sense of trust between the students and the librarians. By running focus groups, you were able to uncover the student's story and figure out what the spaces are saying to them because the layout of a room, the technology, and the furniture, they're all speaking to students. Um, for example, one, of the, one student made a comment about our group study rooms and how for her, that space was saying, you can have a window or you can have a whiteboard, but you can't have both. Now, of course, this isn't what we want to be saying with our spaces. Um, and while it's tempting to sort of think big and say, you know, we're gonna make all these changes at once, the focus groups were a helpful way of identifying small changes like that one that could be made to the existing space. By making changes like that based on their feedback, hopefully the space is now sending the message that we care about how the redesign could actually serve you better and make it more about their space. Um, so after a discussion of the students' favorite learning spaces across campus, one student wrapped it up perfectly by saying, Finding the little nooks and crannies, crannies in places is sometimes an adventure, but it's also a really good way to find places to study in. So it was clear that the students were seeking out these learning spaces and focus groups were an important way to identify what those spaces are, discover what it is that they like about those spaces, and then possibly come back to the library um, with some ideas to try. So after sitting through the focus groups and listening to the recording multiple times while I was transcribing them, I had immersed myself in the student story. I decided to put my backpack back on and my student hat back on, something that wasn't hard considering I've only been working for the past five months, and I went and I searched out these nooks and crannies. Not only was it an adventure finding all of these spaces, but it was such a great learning experience. With each space I went to, I put myself in the student's perspective and I approached each new space with a student's eye. Sitting in each of these spaces, I asked myself, how does this space make me feel? Do I want to spend time here? What happened to my motivation since getting here? 
And even when I didn't like the space myself, I tried to consider who might like the space and what sort of learner the, um, the space might work best for. And when I was in these spaces, I also struck up some conversations with the students that were there, and they were more than happy to share with me their stories about the spaces. As a student myself, I could relate to some of the not so nice experiences, um, as I can recall numerous times where I've thought to myself or I've been frustrated by a space and I couldn't help but wonder, did the designer even consider how students would be using this space? The best spaces for me were able to evoke certain emotions in me, similar to how getting new sticky pads and highlighters could increase my motivation to study come exam time. These spaces actually sparked a desire in me to be a student again, if only so that I could go back and study in these spaces. Now, I didn't look to any research um, for the confirmation on the relationship between study spaces and a better academic performance. But my experience, as well as some of the students' responses in the focus groups, seems to su suggest that how we feel in a certain environment has a significant part to play in the way that we work in that space. That better spaces can actually enhance a learner's performance. Okay, so here's the fun part. So these are some of the spaces that came out of um, our talks. So this right here is a table in our information commons. Um, yeah, so when you see someone at that table, you die a little inside. It's their absolute favorite spot to study. Um, you'll typically see people working at the space like this. I call them the spreaders with their books all spread out at the table. And the, some of the things that they like about this space is the natural light coming in through the window. Um, you can overlook back there. You overlook into the woods. You can see deer sometimes. It's a really nice space. Um, and they just like being able to be sort of in the midst of things without having to interact. Uh, another space. So this is our reading room. Um, students aren't sure what they like about it. You know, maybe the feeling of being surrounded by books, maybe it's an osmosis thing, they're not sure. But whatever it is, it's sort of, they feel inspirational in this space because it's an old, noble, kind of traditional look to it. And then, so this was the Huron reading room again on the left, and on the right was the law library on Western's campus. And sitting in that space, it sort of evokes the same kind of feeling that you get in the Huron reading room. These were some of the more non-traditional spaces, I'd say, that I went to. Um, there was the history department on Western's campus, um, the UCC on Western's campus, as well as the women's studies department. So some of the things that they liked about these spaces, again, were just the wide open spaces, the natural lighting, um, on the bottom there, the Mustang lounge, the ability to um, kind of adapt the space to meet your needs with movable furniture and things like that. Um, even just pretty spaces. Um, so this one on here, the Women's Studies Department, a student mentioned that she would often go to her prof's office hours an hour ahead of time just so that she could sit in this spot and do her work um, just because she was motivated there. Um, oh, and as an aside, um, paint colors matter. So BTW, beige zaps the life out of a space, apparently. Um, so, and I'll call this one a let's do this space. Students really love this space. It was the physics um, building on Western's campus. Again, just the um, aesthetic touches in the space um, is what they like. So they've got the glass staircase. They had sort of like artwork and displays around the space. The adaptable movable furniture with a variety of different seatings. Um, and this sort of is what sparked some of the ideas that we could maybe bring back to here on itself. But as we can see with just some of these spaces, we've got students celebrating um, the new kind of more modern spaces while at the same time still enjoying the more traditional um, spaces. Okay. Okay, so so what? Why does this matter? These are just a few of the highlights. Um, I'll just say that it matters because the wrong learning space can influence your mood to study. For the students, a bad learning space means aimless or distracted reading or working. So then how do you define a good learning space? As one of the students in the focus group put it, the atmosphere is conducive to the way you like studying because not everyone wants the quiet and not everyone wants loud. It's got to be just right, like the Goldilocks. So for example, I showed you the information commons. Um, that really works for students that like to see others studying as that's a powerful motivator for them, but that might not work for a visual learner who might get distracted by the windows and other students. You know, So you've got to find the right fit. Um, so I'll just wrap up by saying that there's a lot of um, discussion right now on current trends on learning commons, and certainly you can incorporate those. Um, but I'll just say from my perspective as a student, creating productive learning spaces um, by collaborating with students is key. Um, let the students have their say. Ask them if they were to design the perfect library, what would it look like? Asking provides insights that librarians need, and you might be surprised by the answers. 
by looking beyond assumptions about what library space should be and thinking of other services or resources um, that make sense for the library, you can begin to move towards the library as the space where new learning experiences can occur. By creating a varied space experience, you have a better shot of appealing to all types of learners. So most importantly, there's no one size fits all. Getting library learning space just right means talking to and involving the students from your community. I encourage you to find your student's story. Thank you.